Guitar and Excel, Interval and Modes, Complement and Parallel Worksheet, Part Number 4. Get ready, because it's time for our Guitar Skills to Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay, because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, if you do have access to this workbook, there's six tabs down below. The first two tabs representing the end work, the finished product, the final worksheet, the numbered tabs tying into the video presentations where we worked on that portion of the worksheet we're now on the 3018 tab where we're going to start at the same point we ended last time so in prior presentations we started out building the musical alphabet so we listed our musical alphabet we numbered the musical alphabet we then put the letters and numbers of the musical alphabet we then wanted to make the alphabet relative for us to start at any one point in that alphabet. This is the key. So we put the four there and we can adjust this to anything we want, which adjusts uh, the format below it. And so now we can start at any point and run through the musical alphabet from there. We then looked at our intervals in terms of absolute intervals, the easiest way to see it, meaning what's the diff distance in half steps or just notes up from the starting point whatever's in this key in this case the c which starts at a four and these are the the intervals in relation to it then we wanted to name those intervals so we gave them the fancy names that we have to memorize to communicate with people we then wanted to put a symbol for those intervals so that we can easily put those symbols somewhere instead of having to put the fancy name and then we put the number of the absolute as well as the symbol name. We also constructed our fretboard on the right hand side. So now we're going to continue on and we want to think about this time our, another worksheet to build our, our scale starting with the major scale. So I'm going to start here. We're going to say this is going to be the uh, scale. I'm going to call this the relative number. So this is going to be the relative number uh, of the scale and I'm gonna say home tab format painter let's wrap that and I'm just gonna say it's gonna go from 1 2 and I'm gonna bring this on up to 20 so I'm just gonna bring this down to 20 down here do, 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 do. that'll make more sense in a second so we got numbers 1 to 20 and then we have a formula formula and before I put the formula in place let's start with our note our note in number format now this starting point of the note in the number format is going to be equivalent to our key over here which is that number four so we'll start with that number four that's going to be our starting point i'm going to format paint the headers over here home tab clipboard format paint these headers now we're going to do our trusty formula for the um uh the major scale which is often called whole whole half whole 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 half or you might call it in terms of just number of notes it's two notes away two notes away one note away two notes away two notes away two notes away and then one note away why is that formula the case that's beyond the scope of this presentation we're going to take that a priori we're going to trust the age the ancients here of the music masters that's that's the that's the formula they gave us so we're going to put that into place that's how you get to a major scale you start from whatever point you're going to start at in this case a c or a four and then you go up uh uh two whole step two whole step one or half step two whole step two whole step two whole step and then one now note that if i look at this in terms of numbers it makes it very easy for me to just do a running balance here to say, well, if I'm on note number four, which represents a C, then I go from four, five, six, which is gonna give us the D. How, so I could do a formula. I could just say, this is gonna be this plus this, all right? And, that, and that's pretty nice and easy to do. That's why numbers are useful. You can count with them. But as I go up here, I go beyond 12. So that's a problem. So I need to come up with some formula for it not to do that. And so I want a fancy formula instead of just kind of figuring it out by hand so I can copy and paste everything. So we'll do a logic test and it'll look something like this equals if brackets 
and we're going to say if that number four plus that number two, if that is less than 13, which means it's going to go up to 12 because there's 12 notes in the musical alphabet, not going to 13, then that's when I put a comma and the next argument is the value if true. What do you want to do if it's true? Well, if it's less than 13, I just want you to take that four plus the two, which would be six. What if it's not true? What if, in other words, it's greater than 13? Well, then I still want you to take that plus that the same way, but it's going to be if it was 13, I'd want you to subtract out 12, which gets me back to the one, which will take me around the circle. So I want you to take that minus 12. There it is. It looks fancy, but not too bad. And it it gives me the six, so let's copy it down and test it out. So I'm gonna copy it down and all the relative references bring it down. So six, seven, eight, up by two. Eight plus one goes to nine. Nine plus two goes to 11. 11 plus two didn't go to 13, but went to 13 minus 12, or you can think of it as 11, 12, and then back to one, which is representing an A, and then a three, and then uh, to the four. Okay, so back home. So now I'm going to repeat this formula. So I can repeat the formula by saying equals the two. And then when I copy this down, it'll copy to the next two down. So that'll just repeat the formula. And I'm going to repeat the formula down to 20. I'm not going to go exactly out uh, to 24 this time. Uh, we'll, so it repeats down to 12 uh, and then down to 20 a couple times over because that will help us when we make our worksheets, which we'll do on the right. So now let's copy this one down as well, and we'll have just the repeat of the notes. So there we have that. Okay, and then I wanna give the, let's do this one, which is going to be the number and the letter. So now I wanna see not just the number, but the number and the letter. So let's format paint home tab, format paint that to here so i'd like to make that four in other words turn into a four with a c next to it as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to uh, my column on the right where we have these two combined together which is going to be over here and i'd like to get that that four c so i'm going to look i'm going to do my x lookup thing again i'm going to say if you see this four I want you to look up that four in this column. And then I would like you to return to me. Uh, I would like you to return, or I, I could do it basically in either of these columns. It might be better to do this column. I'd like you to look it up in this column and then return to me the related letter and number. So you're gonna look up that number four and give me that C4C. So I'm going to use the trusty X lookup again. So this is going to be equals X lookup. And so the lookup value is just going to be that number four comma. Next argument is going to be the lookup array. So I want you to find that value over here. I'm going to go all the way to this one in that array and then comma. Next argument is going to be, let's pull this over so I can see the argument. Return array. We want the return array to be this column and so that should provide me or look up that four and give me that four c so there it is now to copy it down i'm going to double click i have to do some absolute valuing because i don't want these arrays to move down so i'm going to put an absolute value f4 right here dollar signs before the letter and the number f4 right there dollar sign before the letter and number f4 right there and f4 right here dollar signs before the letters and numbers enter then I can just double click on the fill handle and copy it down. So now we have our formula and we can see our formula in number format and in terms of the letters, right? So it goes from a C, which is I'm calling a four because it's the fourth note in the musical alphabet plus two gets me to a six, which I call a D, a six, uh, which is a D, but I call it a six, right? Six plus two is eight. I would call it an eight, which is an E. And, and remember that these notes over here, these numbers are absolute. They are not relative. They are what they are. And, but the positions are gonna be relative, right? So, so we wanna just point that out. But an eight plus one is the nine, that's an F. Nine plus two is 11, that's the G. 11 plus two is back to one, which is an A. And one plus two is the three, which is a B. And three plus one is four, and that gives us our C. 
Okay, uh, so then uh, I, I could list out then the intervals, but I think we already have the intervals basically over here, right? So this is going to be seven out of the 12 notes. So now we've, we've got seven out of the 12. This will become more clear when I make the next worksheet. So let's make this small and let's make the next worksheet, let's make another skinny AP. And this I'm going to call the major or Ionian worksheet. So I'm going to call this the major or Ionian worksheet. And I don't need this bit, I don't think. So remember that the major scale is kind of like our master key. That's how I think most of Western music thinks of the major scale. That looks like how the baseline that everything else was constructed on. Although, again, I think if you had anything else, you can also use it as the key because everything is relative. So, But it's easiest to, to map everything out first off with the major scale thinking of it as kind of like your master key because that's naturally how everything it looks like was built. So then I'm going to say that we're going to be doing the, I'll call this a long name uh, for the relative scale intervals from the chord root. And then I'm going to say this is going to be, this will make more sense in a second. I'm going to say this is the chord scale interval. So I'll get back to that in a second. So then I'm going to name our positions. I'm going to start here in AR4 which is going to be just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In other words, we're taking our full uh, 12 notes uh, scale, our 12 notes in the musical alphabet, and we're pulling in just seven of them. And so, and then those seven notes are going to be, you know, based on this, this information right here, the, the C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then the C is a repeat. Now to populate the actual cells in our worksheet, we, we know they're going to be, this is going to be the starting point, but I'd like to come up with a formula that I can use that will be uniform throughout the entire worksheet. So to see how to build that, I'm going to go up here. This is going to be the relative scale intervals. So I'm going to say this is going to be 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and 12. That'll make more sense in a second, but the general idea would be that we're going to be starting at each of these starting points and then uh, and then increasing by those intervals uh, in order to get the notes that we're, we're going to have in our worksheet. I actually should have pulled them over one. I'm going to pull these over one more. Let's put them over here. Okay, and then I'm going to make from AS to AY a little bit skinnier. We'll skinnerize them. Okay, so then what I'd like to do is I'm going to say, okay, this first, I know what this is going to be. This first cell is going to be a C or a 4C. That's what I want it to be. But I want to be able to look it up in such a way that I can copy the formula across this whole worksheet. So to do that, I'm going to do an X lookup tool. So it's going to look like this. We're going to say this is going to be an X, an X lookup. And then I'm going to say brackets. And I want to be picking up this one. So I'm going to look at that one plus this interval of zero, the distance from that one, which is zero because there is no distance from that one at this point. And then we're going to take that and then uh, comma, that's the lookup value. And we want to find that over here in the relative scale positions where I listed just one through 20. Notice we didn't repeat here because now I'm going up I'm going to continue going up instead of around in a circle. So I'm just going to continue going up to 20 here for our formula. And then we're going to say comma. And that's going to give us the, uh, the what did I did? I did the lookup array. And I should be getting the, so I retyped it and hit the, the lookup array is here. And then I'm going to then go comma and the return array then I want it to give us here. So look that up. So what's it going to do? It's going to look up this value, which is one plus zero or just one. And I want you to look that up over here, which means it's going to find that one right here. It's, and then it's going to return the one that's relative to it, which is the four C. So enter and there we have it. Okay. So that was a little bit complicated, but now we should be able to copy that down if we can get the, the, uh, formula correct in terms of mixed references now. So now I'm going to try to make this even more fancy over here. So we're going to say we have our lookup value. 
So I, I took this, this cell right here, I want it to be able to move down, but not to the right, right? So when I copy it, it doesn't move to the right. So that means I need to make the letter side of things absolute. So I'm going to put a dollar sign before the letters. So I'm going to say dollar sign here. And then this one up top, this one, I want it to move to the right, but I don't want it to move down when I copy it. And so that's the numbers. So I have to put a dollar sign before the numbers on this one to make it mixed. And then this one is, is the lookup array. I want the lookup to array to be the same all the time. So I'm gonna select F4 on the keyboard here, F4 on the keyboard here, same with the return array. I want it to be the same F4, F4. So those are absolute references. These two, I have the fancy mixed references and let's see if that works. I'm going to say enter. Now, when I copy this down, I should get my C, D, E, F, G, A, B. So now it's picking up the five plus the zero. So this is the fifth note. And then the interval from there is zero. So there it is. Now let's copy it this way. And I'm going to say do, 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 do. And so now we've got this one is a C to an E. So what happened here, it's taking the one and then it's going up an interval of two. So it's going up to a three and the three over here is an E, right? So the third relative position uh, from the four. So four to the three is an E, right? And so that's what's happening here. So we're taking the four, the four, plus the one. So let's copy it down this way and see if we can make more sense of it down this way. If I copy it down this way and I pick up like this cell, now I'm saying I'm, I'm starting on the fifth, the five note, and then we're going a four uh, interval from that five note, right? So five plus four uh, is going to be five, six, seven, eight, uh, nine. So, and so I'm picking up this nine right here and that's going to return then the uh 6d so that's how this is being constructed it's a little bit that can be a little bit confusing but the general idea here is what we have now is we have our our notes in the scale c through uh, c d e f g a and then b and then what happens on this side is we construct our chords uh within that scale by taking basically every other note in the scale. So if I look at this scale, I say, how, how would I construct the one chord? It would be C, then skip the D to go to the E, and there's the E, and then you skip the F and go to the G, there's the G. If I start on the D here, I do the same thing. I could start on the D and I could skip every other note in the scale, it gives me to an F in the scale, mind you, not in the whole musical alphabet, and then skip every other note, and that gives you uh, the A. So that's how this is basically being uh, uh, constructed. We'll talk more about that in a second. But then the, the chord intervals, if I put them here, will usually be one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, 11, and 13. Or I can just think of it as taking the last one plus two. Because when we think about uh, th those when we think about the intervals in like a chord, we're not talking about the interval from the root of C, we're talking about the interval from the starting point, it's relative, right? So when we think of a chord, we usually think about the one, three, five of that chord. We're not talking about what we, the scale that we constructed it from, everything here being constructed from the C scale, we're talking about the relative note of the chord. So this would be a D minor, which would be starting on the D and then taking every other note that that happens to result in a D minor because of the intervals, which we'll talk about more uh, shortly. So there's going to be our our worksheet. Now I'm going to make this uh, a little bit smaller here, and then I can also put the Roman numeral. So this is naming the one, uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven relative positions of the notes in the chord. Now, we make each of these, so they, these are the notes then that I can number, I can say what the relative position is. I can say it's, this is the three note, an E is the three note of the C chord. But I also might want to know whether or not I can make a major or minor 
cord from that because we built this whole thing here. We built this whole thing based on the C major. So, so then the question is, I just did the same kind of technique to build all these things. We just took every other note uh, in the scale. We took each of these starting points and then took every other note is what happened. If I took this E, we start on the E and then we take every other note. E, G, that would be the E would be the one, this would be the three, this would be the five, right? Uh, and then if we did it up for the F, then we would say this is the one, the A is the, the, the three, and then the C is the five. That's the one, three, five. However, the three in particular here, when we're just looking at those first three notes in any case, which is the most common thing to first start off learning, has different intervals. Because if the interval is three notes away, then it's a minor third. And if it's four notes away, it's a major third. So the next question is, well, how can I easily know if I start on each of these notes in the scale, whether or not the chord that would be constructed from the key of C in this case would be a major or minor. And we can do that with Roman numerals. So by having upper and lowercase Roman numerals. So I could call this, I'm going to call this equals Roman uh, and then pick up that one. Boom. So now I've got an uppercase one. I know that that happens to be a major. And I know that because when I look at the interval between the four and the, and the, and the eight or E and C, it's a four note distance or a whole step and a half. So whatever you want to go, it's four notes, right? That that's a major third. And that's what we're trying to get a handle on with this interval worksheet. So this one, however, is going to be minor. So I'm going to say this is going to be lower. There's another formula tab and then Roman tab and then that too. So now it's going to be a lower cased Roman two, which means it's a minor. It's a minor because from an interval standpoint, the nine minus three minus six is three. So it's only three notes away. It's a minor third. So, so we can represent that easily over here. It happens to be that the one, four, five will always be major scale constructions in a major scale. And the two, three, and six will be minor. And the seven will be diminished, which is similar to a minor, but has a flat fifth. So we're going to say this will be lower. I can actually just copy this one down. Let's copy this one down. Lower three. This I'm going to copy this one over here because it's going to be upper. Copy that one there. And then this one, uh, I'm going to copy the lower. And then this one is going to be a diminished. So I'll copy the lower. And then I'm going to add something to this one. I'm going to add a dot for the diminished. So I want to say that and. So I tie that in with an and sign. And then I want a text of a period. So I'm going to put uh, quotations, period, quotations. That's how you type text. And there it is. So now it's got a little dot and that's going to indicate that it's diminished. Maybe I should use a better symbol than that. Some people might be picky on that, but that's going to be my distinguishing characteristic. I'm trying to keep it tight and small so it fits in cells easily. All right. So then I'm also going to put on the outside here. This is where I'm going to label that, that it's a C, a C, worksheet. So this, I'm just going to say this equals that 4C right there. So we pull that in. Okay. So then I'm going to make this one smaller. So we're going to lose some of that wording on the header, but that's okay. Uh, uh, I, I think we're going to say that's okay. And then I'm going to make this whole thing. This whole thing is like a header. So I'm going to make all of this black and white home tab, font group, drop down. Let's make it black and white. And then this whole thing is kind of like a header. So I'm going to make it black and white. So I'm going to go home tab, font group, black and white. Oh, hold on a sec. Black and white. There we, have, there we have it. And then I'm going to make this part in the middle. Let's put some brackets around it. Home tab, font group, and we'll bracketize that one. Let's put some brackets around this whole thing that we did. Put some brackets around that. Home tab, font, bracket. And then see if I can make these a little smaller. That's squishing the words. I'll probably, I'm okay to wrap the words. I'll, I want to make it skinny. The words will be wrapped. I'll make it as thin as possible. It's going to get ugly here as we wrap the words, but I want to make it thin. It's important to be thin, but you're becoming anorexic. No, it's not. I'm not anorexic. I'm just trying to lose a little weight. 
All right, let's copy the format of this worksheet. So I'm going to copy this whole worksheet and I'm could it I'm going to put it down here as well. I'm going to paste this down here and then I'm going to adjust it. So so I'm going to say let's get rid of everything in the middle right now and then I'm going to say everything I, I want just really the formatting. Let's actually I'm going to delete the whole thing. I should have just pasted the format and then try to pick everything up so I I make sure that these two things are connected. So I'm going to pick everything up so that I can copy and paste this by saying this equals the cell up there. I'll copy this down to, to, to there. And then I'll copy these two across to here. And I'll say this is going to be equal to that uh, four. And then I'll, I'll do the same thing down here. I'll say this equals, well, I can just copy these down as well. I can copy these down. So now they're all tied together because everything here is tied to what is up top. So what I'd like to put in here then is the intervals. So remember the intervals are on, on the right side over here. So we have then our, our intervals over here, uh, right here. <laughs> so I wanna put both the, the distance and the interval symbol. So what I'm gonna do is compare all the intervals to the the top to the C. So how can I do that? I can say, okay, this is going to be doing our X lookup thing. So we'll use our X lookup equals X lookup tab. And then what's the lookup value? It's going to be that C4. And then comma, where do you want to find that value? What's the lookup array? It's going to be over here. The lookup array is not going to be the numbers, but it has to be the number and the letter because we're looking up that C4. And then another comma, which takes us over here to the return array. What's the return array? I want to give us both the, the number, meaning how many units away it is, how many steps, as well as the symbol, like perfect first, minor second, and so on. So I'm going to hit control shift down to see it that time, or you can just select the whole thing, but I'm trying to get fancy, so the control shift down just to note that and enter, that should give us the zero perfect first. So that kind of ties out to these intervals up top, which are which I'm just calling one, three, five, seven, right? And down here I'm calling it more formally the perfect first, and you know, and so on. So if I if I copy this down or to the right, I want this cell to move relative down and to the right, but the arrays are I don't want them to move. So I'm gonna F4 in here, dollar sign before the letter and the number. F4 in here, dollar sign before the letter and the number. F4 in here, dollar sign. And F4 in here, dollar signs. Enter. Now, if I copy this to the right, then you could see that we, ha we now have the minor third. So I still have this three up here. That means it's a third, right? It's the third. But it's really a, I'm sorry, a major third, which means it's four notes away, which is, gives you this four because it's a, a major chord. And this fifth here, a perfect fifth, corresponds to this five, which is kind of like the more informal format of showing it, right? It's the fifth, but it's actually seven notes away, which you can see 11 minus four is seven notes away. This is going to be uh, the seven, the seven, uh, which is, which is going to be more formally a major seven, which is 11 notes away, which is a little bit more difficult to see. But if you count the distance around the horn from uh, the four around to a three, you're going to get 11, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three. So we can talk about how to do that more easily, basically later and whatnot. But that's the idea. Now, if I copy this down, I could copy this down as well. And there we have it. So but Notice that this cell down here, like this uh, D, if I look at this structure of, of saying it's a one, three, five, which I usually still do, right? We want to say this is the, the D. I don't want to name it in relative terms to the C. I want to name it in relative terms to the D as the starting point. Down here, I'm not doing that, right? We're, we're, all these intervals are in relation to the C, not to the D. And that makes sense to one at one perspective because we're basically looking, we're looking at everything as though it has been constructed from the sea. 
So what we, if we wanted to look at how this was constructed in relation to what does it mean to be the one, three, five in relation to the starting note of a D, then we can look at the relative scale and make it the one basically. And it's gonna construct, we can see a minor three chord if we did a, a, a just three notes. But if we get more detailed and go out to the, to the five, the, the, the seven, the 11 and 13 and so on, uh, so we could go to the relative minor, in other words, and you'd get basically the minor of those three notes and you can get the intervals for the minor. But if, if you're looking at the whole, everything that could be constructed from a C, you will get a minor construction when you look at the intervals for the first three notes, but you'll actually, you're actually looking at a Dorian construction if you go on beyond those three notes. So the next thing we'll wanna do then is map this thing out again with the related uh, modes, the complement modes, which will be like the Dorian, for example, which will then have the Dorian as the one so that we can then see these intervals, the one, three, five, for example, that will create the minor uh, chord that's also within a Dorian or the, or the D minor, right? If we went to the, the A minor down here, for example, which is, might be the easiest one to think about, we would then create the minor or aeolian worksheet where this would be the one and then this would create the minor the minor intervals not relating them to the c but now relating them to the related a right and so that see how everything is basically relative that's why it gets kind of confusing because we constructed all of these scales from the key of c these are all the scales that can be constructed from the key of C by using just our normal routine of taking all of the notes in the key of C and then just skipping every other note to build to build uh, the chords. And then we know what those chords are by the intervals, uh, right? So, so we know the chords by the intervals, the distances between the, the, the notes. And then to see those intervals formally, we can basically make these other worksheets in the related uh, and the related modes, such as the A minor mode, making the A the one, and then looking at all the related notes to it, uh, to that one. So the bottom line I'm trying to get to here is when you look at this worksheet, the intervals for the one chord make sense, right? Because everything is tied out to the one chord. But when you look at the two, you can still see these intervals as they are related to the construction in the C. But that's not how most people talk about it, right? They're going to talk about it as though it's related to its related scale. The D minor, most people will think of it as, but it's really the D Dorian if it's the two chord, which will come up with a, a minor chord. Uh, so, so, when, so we're rethinking the intervals as the one, three, five. So again, we could look at the related Dorian worksheet, which will just reshuffle these from a different starting point to a relative different positions so that the intervals will now be in relation to the D. Okay, so we'll talk about that more in future presentations.